Hey everyone and welcome to this tutorial on the evolution of ischemic stroke on imaging. We will go through how the appearance may differ on MRI and CT throughout the timeline and additionally we will discuss CT and MRI fogging as this phenomenon can cause a diagnostic confusion. We can roughly divide the timeline into four stages, the hyperacute, acute, subacute and then the chronic stage. Knowing the appearance at different stages may help guide the treatment when the onset is unknown. We will focus on the DWI, ATC, flare, and T2 sequences on MRI. The first phase is the hyperacute phase, which is roughly the first six hours from onset. But remember that the appearance may differ between patients as patients progress at different rates. This is usually dependent on the availability on collateral blood flow. In the hyperacute phase, there may be no changes seen on non-enhanced CT. However, there are a few subtle signs that are important to know. The first sign is the dense vessel sign. This represents the clot itself, which is usually with a higher content of erythrocytes, which gives it a more hypertense appearance on imaging. The hypertense MCA sign can also predict a more favorable outcome after mechanical thrombectomy. Early ischemic changes may be very subtle on CT, so always use the symmetry to help you spot small differences. Knowing the symptoms will guide you towards the affected area. Here we have a hypertense MCA clot on the left. So the first area I usually look at is the sylvian fissure, as this area is often sensitive to early ischemic changes in the NCA infarct. Cytotoxic edema causes lower density within the cortex, so the differentiation between the cortex and underlying white matter is no longer apparent. I recommend also to use a stroke window, which may exaggerate this difference and makes it much easier to appreciate these ischemic changes. On MRI, the most sensitive sequence is the DWI. In acute ischemic stroke, there is an influx of water molecules into the intercellular space, which means reduced movement, and this appears bright on the DWI. The ATC sequences should have a corresponding area of hypointensity, confirming the diffusion restriction. Changes on flare and T2 may or may not be visible, but the flare sequence is more sensitive to pick up early changes. Flare is a T2-based sequence with CSF suppression and therefore it is not affected by the partial volume effect from the CSF. These flare changes may play a vital role in the treatment as the DWI flare mismatch can be used to estimate viable brain tissue. Majority of patients will have flare changes after 6 hours, so if the flare changes does not match the DWI, it is likely that the onset of symptoms is within the last 6 hours. Here, the changes are much more prominent on the DWI compared to FLIR, meaning that there is a DWI FLIR mismatch. Compare it to this patient, where the changes on the DWI and FLIR match perfectly, meaning there is no mismatch. The acute phase is roughly 6 to 72 hours after onset. In the acute phase, the ischemic change becomes much more easily appreciated on CT. Vasogenic edema and signs of mass effect become more apparent in the acute phase with salt gall effacement. However, the mass effect usually peaks after 3 to 5 days. The DWI will still show hyperintensity with a matching hypointensity on the ATC. Changes on flare and T2 become more prominent. The subacute phase is roughly from 1.5 days to 2 weeks and we can divide this into the early and late subacute phases. The DWI remains bright, and this is typically due to T2 shine through, but the ATC becomes less dark. The flare and T2 changes are then obviously still bright. Mass effect usually peaks in the early subacute phase, with salt color effacement and a midline shift as demonstrated here. In the late subacute phase, however, we start seeing gear reform enhancement, which is usually due to a re-established flow into the affected area with leptomeningeal collaterals and other new vessels. This enhancement may cause confusion and be mistaken for a tumor. Note, however, that the mass effect and enhancement usually do not overlap, unlike in a case for a tumor. A rule of thumb here is the 2-2-2 rule. Enhancement may begin at day 2, peak at 2 weeks, and is gone by 2 months. At roughly 2-3 to three weeks, the edema starts to resolve while there is an increased infiltrate of macrophages and other reactive changes in the infected area. This may cause a normalization on the infected area on imaging, both on CT and MRI. This fogging phenomenon is seen in roughly 50% of patients. 
This causes a transient appearance and may give a false impression of the extent of the infarcted area and may be impossible to rule out if the patient presents within this time frame. If in doubt, administration of contrast will demonstrate the infarcted area. In the chronic phase, the dead brain tissue has been removed by macrophages, leaving an empty space termed encephalomalacia and gliosis. Adjacent CSF spaces will become more prominent due to volume loss, as demonstrated here by an enlarged left lateral ventricle. Adjacent gliosis is best seen on the FLIR sequences. At this point, the DWI is no longer hyperintense and the ATC signal is high. If the infarct involves the corticospinal tract, there may be an atrophy of the ipsilateral cerebral peduncle and pons, termed the valerian degeneration.